Ephesians chapter 1, we will start reading from verse 17. On Sunday, we started talking about the importance of revelation knowledge. Anybody remember that? The importance of revelation knowledge. Remember, Bible says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I mean, what kind of knowledge is he talking about? Revelation knowledge is not natural knowledge because we go to school to obtain natural knowledge, but that doesn't put us over. I mean, if you were bound before you went to college, after college, you're still going to be bound. I mean, you might even be more bound after college because the stuff they teach these days is like, oh, my word. <laughs> Amen. So, so we're talking about revelation knowledge. Amen. It is so vital that the Apostle Paul is praying for the church that we receive revelation knowledge. Amen. So let's read Ephesians 1 verse 17. Paul, the Apostle Paul praying, he said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. All right. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened Being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe, according to the walking of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. Hallelujah. Praise God. And every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, which means it never ends. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's read that in Amplified Classic a little bit, just so we can... Um, so I, so I can put a microphone to it, and it, <laughs> it, it, it will amplify it for you. Amen. It says, For I always pray to, to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now, he's describing it to you. Of insight into mysteries and secrets. Right? In the deep and intimate knowledge of him. Wow. Remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in verse 9, it said, you know, I have not seen nor heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But it goes on to say, but he has revealed them to us by his spirit. Okay. By his spirit. If we lack revelation, we will lack the things that God has prepared for us. Amen. Amen. If we lack revelation, we will lack all these wonderful things that God has prepared for us. God deals with revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge is how you access what has been prepared for you. Amen. amen. Can you say amen? amen? So tonight... I mean, instead of going to so many places like <laughs> I can see on my note, what I really want to talk to you tonight about is the role of prayer in accessing and operating in revelation knowledge. Specifically, praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Amen. Apostle Paul was praying for the church at, at Ephesus, which will apply to us today. He was praying that God will give us the insight, right? Insight into mysteries and secrets in deep and intimate knowledge of him. Amen. You know we can go to church for 20 years and not have intimate knowledge of God. We might know the do's and don'ts of church, but we are called to know God. That's our high calling, Amen. that we may know him. Amen. Amen. That we may know him. Apostle Paul, after he's done all the wonderful things he's done, he said that my one quest is that I might know him and that I may know the power of his resurrection. How will this happen? Through revelation knowledge. Through revelation knowledge. 
You know, you can have knowledge of the Bible, but until it is revealed to you, it wouldn't do in your life what God intends for it to do. Revelation knowledge is the rocket uh, that launches your faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, glory to God. You see, to everybody hears the word. But until that word is revealed to you, it won't mean much to you. Amen. You see, when you really have revelation of the word of God, struggle to believe ends. I mean, you stop struggling to believe. Why? Because revelation means you got insight. I mean, it's clear to you. Amen. And that can only be given by the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. So let's talk a little bit tonight about the role that prayer plays when it comes to you accessing revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge. Amen. Amen. I've heard ministers, I mean, Dad Hagen talks about that, Pastor Jay talks about this, Pastor Nancy, all of these men and women of God that we, we, we look up to have talked about how praying in the Spirit gives them access to more, allows them to know more, allows them to see more. I have seen that in my life. Amen. I've seen that in my life. The more we pray in the Spirit, the more we know. The more we pray in the Spirit, the more we know. Amen. It's very important that we understand that. Remember, we quoted a scripture the other time in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 in verse 2. Let's just read that for a review tonight. I'm just going to talk to you out of my heart tonight. Let's see, just see how the Spirit of God leads us. I'm not tied to my notes. I'm delivered. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. It says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. But unto God. Remember, prayer, he, he's talking to God. Prayer is us talking to God. Right? Prayer is a dialogue with God. You're talking to him and he's talking to you. If all you did was talk to God and you never heard God, your prayer is not complete. Right? So, anyway, so he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not unto man but unto God. For no man understands him. How be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries. In the spirit, he speaks revelation knowledge. Right? Mystery is something that's not revealed to you. You know, to the senses. Amen. So by praying in the spirit, you, uh, you, 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 you give yourself the privilege of walking with things that are not revealed to the senses. Now, you have to remind yourself. Who reveals these things the spirit of god right in verse 10 of first corinthians 2 2 it says but god hath revealed them to us by his spirit for the spirit searches the deep things of god huh? he searches the deep things of god why is he searching the deep things of god so he can reveal it to us okay now when we pray in an unknown tongue we've we've talked taught on these things before, but it's good to remind ourselves. When we pray in an unknown tongue, the Bible said that the Spirit of God is the one who's giving us utterance. Utterance. Remember, on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter uh, 2, I believe, it said, the Bible said that they were all filled with the Spirit and began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, so the utterance that we speak forth when we pray in an unknown tongue is given by the Spirit. Okay, it's given by the Spirit. These utterances represent insight. These utterances represent deep secrets. That's why the Bible says when we speak in an unknown tongue, we're speaking forth mysteries. When you're uttering those utterances, you're speaking forth mysteries. Amen. Amen. You're speaking forth mysteries. So the more you take the time to pray in an unknown tongue, the more of the unknown you will speak. Wow. 
And the more of the unknown you speak, the more of the unknown you will know. Right? This is, you see, the knowledge of God is reserved for us. Revelation knowledge is reserved for us. But you see, revelation knowledge doesn't just fall on you. It is revealed. For it to be revealed, you have to seek after it. If you don't seek after it, it won't be revealed to you, even though God wants you to have. Oh my gosh, I've been in, I've been in so many spots <laughs> that I went to God and he said, I have all this revelation reserved for you. And here you are banging your head here, bang your head here, you know, bang your head here. And, and I'm like, why you let me do that? He said, because you didn't ask me. I'm like, oh my God, oh, oh, oh. Really? He said, because you see, you, you have not because you ask not. Amen. Amen. We really need to understand these things. Amen. Amen. Even though God has it, he wants to reveal it, we have to ask for it. We have to seek after it. Amen. We have to seek after it. Praying in the spirit allows you the privilege of walking with the invisible. Walking with invisible things. See, people die every day trying to mess with the visible. You know, they check money. You know, they check business for money. They do this. You know, they are, they are dying, struggling with the things you see. But the Bible tells us that the things you see came from the unseen. So if you want to live a higher life, right, you operate with the unseen. Because by operating with the unseen, you control the seen. That's what so many people don't realize. People struggle. I mean struggle, 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 struggle with the sin. Why? Because you're trying to address the sin with the sin. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You have to remind yourself. Hmm? According to Hebrews 11.3, we quoted it, but let's just read it to remind ourselves. Hebrews 11.3, praise God. It says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Did you see that? Yes, things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So why would you die for things that do appear when you can go to the unseen and control them? And control them. Amen. You see, praying in the spirit gives you such privilege. Amen. It gives you the privilege to walk with the things spoken by the Spirit of God. Hmm? Mental praying hmm, does not touch the unseen. Mental praying. But when you pray in other, tongue, in other tongues, you are handling and walking with the unseen. Are you here? Mental praying, you know what I call mental praying? Praying according to what it looks like, what you see, what the senses are telling you, what the bank account is telling you, what the body is telling you, what everybody else is saying. Huh? What everybody else is saying, such praying does not touch the unseen. So you're going in, cir in circle. Zzz, like a plane going in circle at the airport on the runway, but it never takes off. That's what mental praying will do. I mean, you see motions, right? The plane's moving, it's spinning, but it never takes off. Amen. Amen. But when we pray in an unknown tongue, we get the privilege of walking with things you don't see. You get the privilege of accessing revelation knowledge, which God has prepared for you to put you over. Amen. Amen. 
This is one of the ways you speed things up in your life. Hmm? How many of you have seen it written on vehicles? God's time is the best. <laughs> People write it on the, uh, on the trucks or on the um, bus, you know. God's time is the best. Do you know that as a being created in the class of God, God gave you the privilege to, to control timing. He gave you the privilege to control timing. But the way to control timing is to operate in revelation knowledge. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. To operate in revelation knowledge. Why? Because revelation knowledge brings you into the pace of God. God operates according to revelation knowledge. So when we operate according to revelation knowledge, we are operating in God's pace. Outside of revelation knowledge, we will operate in human pace. <laughs> are you hearing me? We will operate according to human pace. And human pace can be very frustrating. Because you look around, there are places you want to get to. But there are so many things that have to be in place for you to get there. And bam, you, you're like, okay, I can't do this, I can't do this. And then we start to, to philosophize, you know. <laughs> uh, is that a word or did I make that one? <laughs> Philosophy, you know. You know? <laughs> you know, we try to philosophize the whole thing. You know, and then, and then that's how people coin the phrase, God's time is the best, you know. This, you, know and, you know, it might not be your season and so on. Well, if you operate in revelation knowledge, it brings you into God's season. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You can know God's season. You can operate in God's season. Why? By operating in revelation knowledge. How? Praying in the spirit. Because when you pray in the spirit, the Holy Spirit is taking what God knows and he's telling it to you. Not only telling it to you, but giving you the privilege to conduct business with it. Amen. Do you know, you can build a city praying in the spirit. Ah, you can build a whole estate praying in the spirit. And after you pray it, after you build it in the spirit, in the natural, it becomes a flow. It becomes a flow. Why? Because you have built it in the unseen. And that's the only way the sin becomes a flow. And that's what we call walking with revelation knowledge. Amen. Natural knowledge produces the pace of man. Hmm? But revelation knowledge brings you into the pace of God. Progress in anything. That God has called us to do. That God has called you to do. Is tied to revelation knowledge. Progress. How many of you understand what progress is? Progress. Meaning advancement. In anything that God has for you. Is tied to revelation knowledge. Is tied to revelation knowledge. Why? Because what he has for you. Is already prepared. It's already prepared. I mean, this is something that God has spoken to me over the years, for a long time. And sometimes I pinch myself. I say, uh, uh, are, you, are, you, are you getting this? I said, are you getting this? Because many times we face things as if God hasn't prepared anything. You know what that tells us? We lack revelation. Because revelation lets us know, it allows us to approach everything with the understanding that provisions are there. God has already been around it. He's already set it up. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And the more we spend time praying in the spirit, the more we see what God has already prepared. 
So we don't waste time trying to make something happen that God has already put in place. Because anything you engineer outside of what God has already put in place will not be original. And we know about original around here, right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Are you here? We know about original because if it's not original, it will stall you on the road. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So when we lack revelation, we delay our progress. So what are we to do? Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. When we pray, when we pray, what are we expecting? Have you ever thought about this? When you're praying, what are you expecting? Talk back to me. Hmm? Answers, right? Ideas, right? 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 When you pray, you're expecting answers. You remember? Call unto me and I will answer you. So in other words, when you pray, expect revelation. Because whatever God tells you is revelation knowledge. It's not normal knowledge. It's not natural knowledge. Amen. Amen. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not. Which you know not. But you see, most prayers, people pray and they're expecting their bank account to change. You know, they're expecting job. You know, something to happen. What God hands you in prayer is revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge. Are you here? He causes you to see. <laughs> he causes you to see. And when you see and you begin to act according to what you see, his power produces it. Amen. Amen. That's why the Apostle Paul prays that the eyes of our understanding Amplified Bible says, being flooded with light, flooded with light, that we may know and understand what God has made us and the things that we possess as a result and the things that we can do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So Jeremiah 33 says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Remember Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2 in verse 1. It said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what it will say unto me. I will watch to see what it will say unto me. If we were to put it in our vernacular, you know, like a natural man talking, he said, and I will wait to hear what he will say unto me. But he says, I will watch to see. So when God speaks to you, you see. Revelation is you. Anything that God says is revelation knowledge. Right? And you see when he speaks. Amen. You see when he speaks. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Someone say, I don't know, you know, I'm just waiting, you know, for God to do this or tell, you know, do something. He made this comment to me. I think I've said it somewhere. It says, when we start asking, when we start asking, God starts telling. When we start asking, God starts telling. But if we flip it the other way, if we don't ask, he won't tell. And if he doesn't tell, we wouldn't know. Right? And when you don't know, your movement is limited. Are you hearing? 
when you know your life moves forward, right? Because your life moves based on what you know. And when you lack knowledge, it causes hesitation. Amen. Amen. And you can cause accidents. <laughs> Have you seen people? Oh my gosh, bless their hearts. They, they are standing in the middle of the road. On the phone, trying to find direction. Huh? Why? The movement is no longer going forward. But because they, of where they are, they are now uh, a threat to other people's safety. When you lack revelation knowledge, you can become a threat, not only to your progress, but to people around you. Because lack of revelation, lack of revelation will cause you to stop where you shouldn't stop. Right? Are you here? Without going to the realm of God, we are left to walk with corrupt fire. Without going to the realm of God, we are left to walk with corrupt files. What are corrupt files? Natural knowledge. Yeah. How many of you are familiar with computers, right? You know, you get a file that's corrupt, man. It, it destroys everything. Are you here? It destroys everything. That file came, so the corrupt file with stuff you've had before is not even safe anymore. Are you listening? So when we don't go to the realm of God, huh, where revelation knowledge is available to us, everything else we're doing is we're working with corrupt files, corrupt knowledge. Hmm? Natural knowledge is corrupt. No, it's corrupt. And if all you're doing is every day you're working with natural knowledge, you're doing this, okay, with this, this, okay, you're working with corrupt files. It will never produce the result that God has awaiting you. The only access to the kind of result that God has for you is revelation knowledge. How do you do that? Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. I said, praying in the spirit. I remember over the years, the Lord, um, over the years, the Lord gave me the privilege through Pastor Jay to lead prayer for him for several years. And I remember in those times, it was like a school for me. It was like being in the lab with God. And you get to learn so many things that will happen while you're praying. And God will explain it to me and help me explain it to the people. And I go back and I look at the utterances. I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. And I would never have seen it any other way except for in his presence. Except for coming to his presence. Amen. That's why it's important that we go to the realm of God. When we pray in an unknown tongue, we change realms. Yeah, hmm? yeah. We change realms. What do we do? We go to the realm of God. What happens in the realm of God? Answers, revelation, knowledge. We get to see what we don't see before. We get to know what we don't know before. Are you okay with what you know today? I know I'm not. That's the more reason we ought to pray in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. God would say to me over the years, he who prays more knows more. He who prays more knows more. I'm talking about praying in the spirit. When you understand that this is how you access revelation knowledge. You know, I, I mean, you could be praying in the spirit. You know, just praying in the spirit. And he will quicken a scripture to you. Why are you praying in the spirit? He will quicken a, a scripture to you. You go back and read that scripture, that's revelation for you. It changes everything. Yes. It changes everything. Amen. What does it, what happens now, uh, uh, what happens? It becomes a rocket. 
that launches your faith. Nobody sees you down here anymore. You are in your place of possession. Amen. Amen. That's why we spend time praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. That's where revelation awaits us. Amen. God will never bring revelation to you outside of you asking and seeking for it. Hmm? You have to ask for it. Amen. You have to ask for it. God has designed it that we get to operate with all these things as we pray. So the point I was making earlier is that during those years, he would teach me about some of these things in prayer. He said, when you come to pray, you've come for us to build something together. Let Come, and I will give you the building materials. The building materials is revelation knowledge. Let me share with you what I know. And you speak what I know because you are the one on the earth. Hmm? God can't do anything on the earth except through us. Right? Us operating in revelation knowledge allows God to do through us what he already planned to do. So in prayer, he will say to me, we're going to build. And I will provide the building material. So I'm thinking, you know, after we move here, every now and then I have, you know, I think about those things. And I think about the place that they go for building materials. And I get on my knees. We get to pray. We are. We're heading to Day Day. Day Day Market. Eh? Day Day Market to collect building materials. Except for this. This one is a different Day Day. <laughs> right? This one is the higher one. That when you build it there. It becomes a flow for you here. Yeah. Pastor Jay used to make this comment. He said, if you will pray it out, you will walk it out. Yeah. If you pray it out, you will walk it out. Not, not like labor. Like you will stroll it out. Huh? If you pray it out, you will walk it out. That's how God designed for us to function. Because everything that God prepared for us, he's already prepared. Yeah. Revelation knowledge gives us access to them. Right? Yes. So how do you access revelation knowledge? Allowing the spirit of God to reveal it to you in prayer. Yes. Praying. Praying, God, I want to know. Father, I want to know. Have you ever taken the word of God? Let's say, for instance, let's try to break it down. Like I said, I don't have a certain order tonight. Let's say you take the word of God that says, you know, himself took my infirmities, right? Himself took my infirmities. Uh, himself took my infirmities. Himself took. I you remember I was telling you, I was praying over that scripture one day, just praying in the spirit, and that scripture came to me. Himself took. Himself took. And then after that revelation hit, the Spirit of God said to me, then what it took, you ought not to have. Right. What he took, you ought not to have. You see, after that, he took, took a different dimension for me. Yes. Now when I read himself took, it, it means I am to be found without it. It emboldened me to stand and enforce that revelation. In other words, when he says himself took, you know what else he's telling me by revelation knowledge? Don't allow it. Don't allow it. Don't allow it. You see, that's revelation. Don't allow it. If you have that revelation that himself took, you wake up, no, 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 no. Don't, I will not allow it. I will not allow it. Himself took. See, that's how he quickens you as you're praying. You're praying, praying, praying. So if you took that scripture and went to pray, he would, I mean, he will enlighten you. He will enlighten you. Huh? It will enlighten you. It's like a spacecraft. I mean, if you ever been close to a place or watch, or watch it on television where the spacecraft is taking off, 
The kind of fire underneath. Hey, glory to God. It's like, whoa, I mean, fire underneath that propels that, you know, that causes that uh, space thing to take off. That craft to take off is powerful. Hmm? I said it's powerful. That's what revelation knowledge does for you. Hallelujah. It, before you know it, you're like, woo, way up there. <laughs> way up there. Amen. Amen. How, you, how do you get there? Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. So that's just one scripture. You could take another scripture that, you know, uh, um, Jesus became poor. So that us, through his poverty, might be rich. You can take that praying, Father. I ask you to open my eyes to this scripture. Show me the light. I know that what I'm seeing today is not what you planned. This word said this. So I'm here, Father, to talk to you about this. Spirit of the living God, give me utterance. Show me. And you begin to pray in an unknown tongue. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. And stay with it. It's not just something you go, okay, I prayed a little bit. No, no. That means, you see, when you pray in the spirit, you're saying, I'm not willing to stop until I obtain. Are you hearing? You see, so many of us are so quick to give up. When we try it small. See, when you know the reality, you don't try it. You go for it. Amen. Amen. Nobody, I mean, let's say I handed you your best, you know, the kind of soup you like. And the swallow you like. I say, sit down, eat. No, nobody says, let me try this. <laughs> if, you, if you say, let me try, it was a joke. Uh -huh. Because uh, let me try means to uh, let, let other people not think about joining you. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> because if you say, well, oh, yeah, it's good. Everybody will want to. And I said, well, let me try, Sha, right? <laughs> You've excluded the people. But you see, when it's real like that, it's not something you try. You just go for it. I said, you just go for it. Amen. Glory to God. So by praying, that's how those revelations come. Amen. God has designed it for us to access what seems inaccessible in the natural. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. You can access by prayer what seems to be inaccessible in the natural. Why? You are dealing with origination. <laughs> Right? right? Yeah. Because it comes from that realm to this realm. Yeah. People waste their time trying to mess with things on this realm. That's why as a new creation, we have the privilege to go to where it originates from. And work with our Father. Amen. 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 Glory to God. God said some, said some things to me over, over the years, over time, that I'd like to repeat to you. I was reading it and then I, oh my gosh, yeah. He, he will often say to me, hmm, take what I have spoken to you and pray over it in other tongues. Pray over it in the spirit. Just like you would take the written word of God and pray over it in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Father, I need revelation. I need revelation. I need revelation. If you were listening, I think it was Bishop Oyedepo that I, I heard make the comment. He said he took the Bible and took one of the books that was written by Kenneth Copeland, uh, Sister Gloria uh, Copeland, and went and locked himself up with a paper and pen. What was he doing? Seeking revelation. And when the revelation hit, he said, I'll never be broken ever again. And look at him, he's still going. Yeah. What is power in him? Revelation. Same is available to all. Same is available to all. Do you see what I mean? The same, God is not a respecter of persons. Revelation is available to all, but the problem is that not many are seeking it. 
You can pray without seeking revelation. Pray mental prayers. Pray like, you know, people want you to join them for prayer. But you can actually pray by the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember Romans 8.26? The Spirit of God helps our infirmities, for we know not what to pray as we ought to. As we ought to. As we ought to. How do you ought to pray? Pray according to revelation knowledge. So he comes alongside with you, providing you with those revelation knowledge by giving you utterances. And you speaking them forth. It's you speaking forth mysteries. Amen. Amen. And remember, while you're speaking it, the Bible said also that you will have whatsoever you say. So by speaking for those mysteries, get what you will have. What you said. Those things that were mystery will become known to you. Why? Because you've given it utterance. You know, you've, you've spoken it out. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. One of the issues with so many of us, see, I included myself, hmm? with so many of us, is that we are trying to access through the natural things that are only available in the spirit. What God promised you is not in the natural, it's in the spirit. It's a spiritual commodity. That's why people who pursue natural things miss the revelation to cause it to show up. Hmm? To pursue natural things will be like a woman huh? pursuing a, a birth certificate without seed. Hmm? Without seed. What is the seed in this case? Revelation. You can't give birth to what's not in you. Right? It is revelation. See, that's how God designed it. You, you hear us say it all the time. That the word of God is the seed of everything that God will ever do. Well, if it's a seed, what needs to happen? The revelation needs to take place. When you receive revelation, you conceive. Hmm? Huh? When, you receive, when revelation comes, it comes to give you what that word really is. And once you come conceive and you speak it forth, you give birth to it. Amen. 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 But the issue with so many of us, issue, 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 issue with so many of us is that we are trying to access through the natural the things that are only available by the Spirit. Hmm? Are you here? Yes, sir. So what are we going to do? Somebody say, ha, pastor. What shall we do? Yeah. Huh? We will pray in the spirit. We will spend time praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. You see, pray with the understanding of what happens. You see, before, I used to see people pray in the spirit, and I'm like, I remember when we were young, I went to a crusade ground one time. <laughs> I went with the <laughs> big, I call them the big shots of faith. <laughs> Except for when people started praying in the spirit, people, I mean, they ran. I, I, I don't want anything falling on me. Or, so everybody just walked up as little children. But you see, if you want what God has, you have to go places you haven't been before. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you take time praying in the spirit. The understanding is that this is how God works. This is how God works. Remember, I don't know that we have time to go through it all tonight. Uh, let me see what all I can show you. You remember Ezekiel. How many of you remember about the dry bones? I didn't prepare for this. Like I said, I'm speaking out of my heart to you tonight. Did you notice when God said to Ezekiel, God took him and took him in, into the spirit. He was in the spirit. He was in the realm of God. And he saw what God was showing. 
you know, he took him through the valley of dry bones, right? And he asked him, what do you see? Yeah? He said, I see valley filled with dry bones. And then God said to him again, Can this, shall these bones live? He said, you know, you know, you're the only one who knows. And then God spoke to him again. He said, you prophesy to these bones. <laughs> these things were happening in the spirit. Why he's praying, right? In the spirit, praying. These are some of the things that you see happen when you're praying in the spirit. Okay? What was happening? This was when God was getting ready to walk on this, uh, 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 his people Israel. Right? He was walking on them. But he, he took a man to go in the spirit to cooperate with God. And after he prayed and God showed him, I'm paraphrasing all, the, all these things tonight. After he prayed and God showed him and told him what to say and he kept saying, the Bible said, and, the, and all the dry bones became filled with flesh and breath came into them and they became a mighty army. And it happened in the natural. And it happened in the natural. Amen. Amen. That's how God's system works. Stop struggling in the natural. Get in the spirit where revelation knowledge is available and walk with that. Amen. And it will produce in the natural. Amen. Amen. Oh, let me see if I can find that. Oh, my goodness. Glory to God. God is ever helping us. Ever helping us. Amen. Go with me. Let's, let me just show it to you briefly. Look at uh, Ezekiel. I think it's 37. Is it? Where are my Bible scholars tonight? Ezekiel 37, yeah. <laughs> Man, praise God. Let me make this comment to you that God, by the Spirit, made to me, uh, what? Three years ago, a couple years ago, three years, maybe, yeah. The state or condition of natural things can be traced to the spirit realm. It is what you do in the spirit realm that affects the condition of things in the natural. Go to Ezekiel 37 verse 1. Okay. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the okay, in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. He was in the spirit. Praying, Ephesians chapter 6, 18 tells us, praying uh, with all manner of prayer in the spirit. Okay? Verse 2, and caused me to pass by them round about. He was in the spirit. He was seeing in the spirit. Right? And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Okay? And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. <laughs> All right. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. See, sometimes we, we, we act funny when we hear the word prophesy. Right? Well, prophesy means God, God will give you something to say. Yeah. Say what God said. A amen. Say what God said. In other words, prophesy over these bones. Repeat after me. Yeah. We, we will see that. Yeah. Not just run into a man to talk whatever. Right. <laughs> Are you listening? Okay. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say to them. Yeah. He's telling them what to say. Yeah. And say to them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> And thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Okay? And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring 
up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. This is concerning his people. This was what God was about to do for his people. All right. So here's a man cooperating with God in the realm of God through prayer. Okay. So I prophesied as I was. Did you see that? You see, in the spirit, in the realm of God, God will talk to you. He will tell you what to say. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. My wife and I, we talk about it often. We can tell you instances where we're praying in the spirit. And the spirit of God will say to us, now begin to say. Yeah. Now begin to say. And boy, have we seen some things just by saying what he said to say. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I remember one instance. We'll continue. This was in the States. We were just praying together in the morning. And the Spirit of God said to us in prayer, begin to say that man that's looking for you will find you. That man that's looking for you will find you. To my head, it's like, oh my gosh, I hope he's a good man <laughs> looking for me. But you see, when you know the voice of the Spirit, you were in the Spirit, so we continued. So afterward, we said, that man looking for me shall find me. That man looking for me shall find me. Right? So I went to the business. Somebody came in, was talking to me. You know, he knew I was a preacher. He said, wow. My pastor will be glad to talk to you. I've never met this man before. So I said, here's my number. So he took my number, gave to his pastor. His pastor calls me, and we set up for lunch. And he said, out of his mouth, I've been looking for you. He was the youth pastor for Jerry Seville back in the day. Huh? We sat there, had lunch, did all, and, and I introduced him to my spiritual father. How did we see that? Just praying and repeating what we heard in prayer. I mean, that's just one example amongst many. But you see, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Praise God. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Okay? And he said unto me, see, 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 do you see what I'm, this is walking with revelation knowledge. It's not just you coming up with ideas. He's in the spirit. The only thing you have accessible to you is revelation knowledge. Words from God. Words from God. That's what our prayer life should look like. That's what I, that's what I mean by in the spirit. When you're praying in the spirit, you can build things in the spirit. This was God using a man to build a whole people. A whole people, a whole nation, a whole nation, one man and God building a whole nation. Can you imagine what God can do with you and I building our country? <laughs> See what I mean? That's, why I, that, that's what I'm talking about. Instead of hollering around talking nonsense like everybody else, let's get in the spirit. And actually walk with materials that will produce. Yes. And that's revelation knowledge. Yes. And he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind. Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. <laughs> Who is telling them what to say? No. See? He, in the spirit, the spirit of God gives you utterance. Where is he getting the utterance? From God. From God the deep things of God. Yeah. Insights. Yeah. Secrets. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, <laughs> I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. All these things are playing out in the spirit. In the spirit. Okay? Look at verse 11, right? Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Wow. 
<laughs> Behold, they say, our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. In other words, that God was restoring a nation as a man was praying. Not just praying, 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 you know, praying ordinary prayer, but praying with revelation knowledge. Praying in the spirit. A lot of our prayers we hear here is just mental prayer. Oh God, punish them. Punish our leaders. But that's not prayer. Are you listening? That's not prayer. Prayer is you ascending to the realm of God. Have God show you where things are and you speak it forth. And if we do this right, it will always work. Always. 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 Why? Because it is revelation knowledge. Glory to God. That's what I call talking secrets with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So then he said, therefore prophesy and say unto them. Did you notice this whole transaction took place between Ezekiel and God. After they finished, he said to them, now tell them. (laughs) <laughs> now tell them. Isn't that what he said? Therefore prophesy and say to them. Thus says the Lord God. Behold O oh my people. I will open your graves. And cause you to come up out of your graves. And bring you into the land of Israel. Hallelujah. 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 What are we talking about? Praying in the spirit. Walking with revelation knowledge. Amen. 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 Talking secrets with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how God designed to accomplish what he wants to do in our lives and with our lives. So if we don't pray this kind of prayer, we will live ordinary. And what God designed to happen will not happen. This is not the kind of prayer for religious people. Are you hearing? This is not the kind of prayer. I mean, Ezekiel didn't go in with prayer points. Are you hearing? There's nothing wrong with prayer points. But, you know, people make prayer points God instead of actually hearing God. Because who who says that God's going to stick with your prayer point? He may start talking to you about something else. So if all you got is the prayer points, you will miss revelation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when I say prayer points, I'm not against prayer points. But it just limits you to what you can come up with. You're not troubled because you don't have what you can come up with. You're troubled because you don't have what God has. And that's what you want. So drop what you have and go up to what he has. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Are you here? Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Isn't that wonderful? So, (laughs) that's what happens when we pray in an unknown tongue. When we pray in the spirit, that's us walking with God. This is exactly. If God could do, if God can resurrect a nation using one man, one man, one man. What will he do with several hundreds of us? Hmm? And this country is not even that big. Are you hearing? This country is not even that big. This, this country is only the size of one state in the U.S. And U.S. has 50, 50 states. But they're not always that big. You know, I know. The state of Texas and Nigeria is about the same size. My point is, the issues here are too small if we will be spiritual. If we will be really spiritual. If we will be spiritual. Hmm? Are you hearing? If we will be spiritual. So let's just develop the habit of 
I just want revelation knowledge. I want what God knows. So many people come to talk to God about what their problem says. God's not interested in what your problem is saying. God is, you ought to be interested in what God has to say. Amen. And talk to him based on what he says. See, that prayer, that encounter with Ezekiel is a demonstration for us on how to approach. You come in there in the spirit. Now, God, show me. Okay. All right. And you repeat what you say. Uh, you repeat whatever he says. Whatever he says to you to do, you just do it. You just repeat. You just repeat. That's called walking with God. That's how you know more. Amen. That's how you know more. Otherwise, you'll be so ordinary. Yes, sir. Amen. You'll be so ordinary. Revelation knowledge makes us extraordinary people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Revelation knowledge does to a Christian what, uh, uh, what ornaments does to a Christmas tree. Huh? It beautifies it. Have you seen a Christmas tree with no ornaments? It's not attractive. But when you decorate it, put on all those ornaments and all the lights, people will stop just to look. Amen. There are places that, you know, during the Christmas people decorate and people actually drive there just to see. God said he wants us as billboards. To our nation. Look at what God can do. Amen. But how do you get there? Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Taking time to pray in the spirit. Amen. Get off of this band band wagon of, oh, we're just trying to make it. Get in the spirit. Get in the spirit. And pray in the spirit. And have God help you walk with commodities that already exist. Hmm? Instead of trying to survive, you actually thrive. Amen? Walking with the heavenly materials. Amen? 